In our case, communication among members of a multidisciplinary working team aiming at sustainably converting the urban territory has the purpose of collecting information useful to get to know the surrounding territory on various levels urban, economic, social, ecologic, and so on. Indeed, the only way to get to know the territory is through communication, as the exchange of information brings about cohesion and bonds with the local community, so as to positively arrange the conversion activities. Communication and information flows between the working team and local public or private authorities. Therefore, it must be developed according to model of urban territory management. This model encompasses all levels of participation within a territorial area, like institutional level, private level, local levels. And only through negotiation and exchange between the team and the different territorial actors, it is possible to get a strategy of integration and territorial development. In this view, only multi-sectoral communication can produce solutions to urban reconversion questions by negotiating with the territory's main actors. This type of communication, of course, goes against any self-centered action and allows our team to collect all contributions and responses from the contacted territorial entities, as well as the real value of spaces or goods to be converted. Integrated communication activities embracing territorial bodies and authorities are core to understand strengths and weaknesses of the sustainable conversion project. Strategic Communication Plan The creation of a strategic communication plan by the working team is essential and it must embrace a thorough communication strategy based on two levels. On the first level, the need to collect data on a territory, coherent with the project's aim, as well as collecting information on already implemented or ongoing projects on sustainable conversion in this specific area. On the second level, the need to develop those data and information within and by the territorial network, which together with our team has to draw up a negotiated project. A strategic communication plan, furthermore, serves the purpose of informing and inviting local duly selected stakeholders, as well as external stakeholders on the project's advantages, objectives, values and activities. The diversity of public and private stakeholders, of course, entails different communication styles or different negotiation methods according to the authority the team wants to contact or interact with. A useful suggestion could be the calling for meetings or roundtables on specific topics and involving interested key actors in order to find solutions to local issues or to set out negotiations on urban territorial development. Such initiatives may also envisage playful and recreational events, such as festivals or sport competitions, in order to involve public and private bodies. Such initiatives highlight the goodwill of the team and of the local network on realizing a project together. The communication plan shall also expect a variety of media to be involved in order to promote the team's action, as well as the local network's activities, to a wide and broad audience. Media coverage is a key resource to get in touch with further stakeholders and partners. The working team eventually develops its networking and communication activities so as to bring value to the local community. This means that the planning brand new and sustainable solutions to convert the territory necessarily becomes an action the local community will promote and support. Therefore, the contents of the communication must be seen as values upon which investments are necessary in order to make a territory sustainable, welcoming, livelier for its inhabitants. Communication thus needs to convey and spread the value or values carried on by the conversion project. A successful networking activity shall be based on the mutual exchange of skills competences and information among all individuals and institutions. It represents the ability to create context for a specific goal, in our particular case, a professional goal, creating further context and relations. The working team has to take advantage of such a network in order to share context, solutions, information and data. 
These activities are included in the territory the network works in, and so the activity are developed based on the network of different professionals and specialists, and on the integration of human resources coming from different sectors. The product and its production acquire therefore a different and even higher social and commercial value. The territory is the link that connects the various public and private authorities which stand together form a network. A network, therefore, can be described as a source of connections. In our case, the networking activity envisages different actions like a shared cognitive work, productive alliances, technological cooperation, relations with suppliers, and sharing contacts in order to increase communication and facilitate the achievement of the project goal. The networking activity becomes then a form of social and human capital that could address needs and problems of the local territory and its inhabitants. This process is usually spontaneous and so without specific plan, leaving room for new resources and or opportunities. The networking activity also serves the purpose of overcoming territorial limits in terms of its resources, so as to look for new resources and innovative solutions. Our multidisciplinary team of experts has the basic aim of recovering and converting territorial resources, which of course is not an easy task, and in the case of discontinuity or problems, the new context from the networking activity would surely be a valuable resource to find any solution.